Hey everyone, it's me, Ori Dahl, sitting on Rashid. I'm your anthropologist and sociologist. Hit the like button, share this video, subscribe to the channel, become a member of the channel, and don't forget to donate in the links below. Thank you very much. All right, quick message. Stop. You need to stop doing the following. You need to stop. If you have a difficult time stopping, that means you need therapy because there's something seriously wrong here. Stop putting yourself around people who continuously treat you like an option. Okay, let me say it one more time. Stop putting yourself around people who continuously treat you like an option. Listen, as a human being, you owe others and others owe you. Simple as that. You can't act without any regard whatsoever. The number one commitment others, I mean society or the community expects you to have towards them is to, be, is to be a safe individual, as they should. So even if you're a stranger somewhere, you're still expected to do your part to be a safe influence onto them. However, the same they should do towards you too. Absolutely. It goes both ways. However, in society, most of the time, the expectations are one-sided. You are expected to be committed to the group, but the group treats you like an option. And that ain't right. That is horrible. That is criminal. And there's no way you can justify this. Just understand the following. People shouldn't continuously treat you like an option. Look, if I apply for a job and there are 200 other applicants for the job, I'm an option to the recruiter because the recruiter cannot give all 200 people that apply the same job. Not going to happen. So I accept. I apply for a job. It's just an application. I'm not guaranteed to get the job. So if I don't get the job, so be it. Unless I would, I would be one of the few people who are qualified and they chose someone who still was even qualified for the job, that's a bit weird. And in some cases, if they decline to give you the job without any proper reason, they may even be in legal trouble when it comes to discrimination, racism, or whatever. However, but that's, that's another topic. What I'm saying is, when I apply for a job, I'm just one of the many people applying for the job. Okay, that's different. The moment the job hires me, from that point on, they should cease treating me like an option. Anytime your employer keeps emphasizing that they can fire you anytime and they can, they can easily get someone else, or maybe they don't threaten to fire you, but they keep tell, telling you that they have so many people want to work there, there are so many applicants, and then we keep emphasizing the fact they're able to replace you without telling you directly. What's going on? They're putting a spell on you. They're triggering insecurity and anxiety in you. It's a spell. Why are they doing that? To make you feel less about yourself. And when you feel less about yourself, they automatically gain a psychological leverage over you. And once they have a psychological leverage over you, they come close to controlling you. Okay, let me use another example. If you're on a dating app, by the way, be very cautious with dating apps. I'm not saying you cannot use them, but it, there's a risk to it. You know what I'm saying? Like that. Let's say you're on a dating app, you're swiping. So there you just swipe. Uh, people barely just get uh, talk to people, get known. You just swipe. You know you're just one of the many options people swipe. Okay? But let's say there's a match between you and another individual, and you end up meeting one another. You exchange numbers. You're talking from that point on. Even if later uh, they don't feel like uh, continuing the, continue the relationship, they cannot treat you like you're just an option. Okay, even if it didn't work out, you guys didn't actually end up uh, marrying one another, whatever, they at least have the decency to continue to treat you as a decent human being. They may not call you all the time or hang out with you, but come on now. You met, you made effort, it didn't work out, but come on now. There's no such thing as continuously treat someone like an option and remaining innocent. It, does, it doesn't go that way. Or let's say now 
forget dating apps. Let's say you actually met people in person without any dating apps, and now you end up living together or you end up marrying one another. Let's say you're married now and your wife has all these dudes DMing her on Instagram. Now, if she tells you about it and she keeps um, uh, emphasizing that she's not interested, both of those guys are worse to you. And even better, she even posts pictures to get of you two together on Instagram show everyone this is my man. If that's the case, oh my, let those guys see Emma. So what? She already showed that this is her man. She showed you publicly this is my man. And she even tells you about all the guys aiming her. So that means she's showing commitment to you. But what if your wife, either she has Instagram or Facebook, whatever, let's say she has social media, and you have all these guys DMing her, or she has all these quote unquote male friends around in her social media, or even in a mobile phone, she has all these guys in her contact. Now, as a husband, you're not the center of, the, of heaven and earth. You are her, her human husband. You're not the Heavenly Father. You're not God. So you're not the center for existence. Neither should you be. Okay? You cannot guarantee anything by yourself. Neither can she. Only the Heavenly Father can give you guarantees. And you can't even be available to her 24-7 because you need to sleep and do other stuff too. Neither can she be 24-7 available unto you. You're a human being. She's a human being. You're both formal creatures. So that she has other people in her social media or in a mobile phone so what you it's human you, sh you can't be everything onto her neither can she be everything onto you okay if you think like that uh, sorry you have issues you need help but anyway let's say your wife has all these men both in her social media and in a mobile phone and you catch her talking to them now you should be able to ask her who are those guys she freely tells you about them but if she is kind of secretive or she kind of wants to hide these people from you what's going on she is disregarding you because i know for sure if she saw you interacting with all these other women on social media or if she catch you texting uh, other women she would want to check who are they she would even sneak into your phone to see what's going on she even get upset thing about it. So hold on a minute. She expects you to be committed to such an extent that she controls uh, the social options you have in life. Because not everyone from the opposite sex you're talking to is about having sex. No, you may be talking to a female colleague. You may be talking to a female cousin of yours. Or you may be talking to a female client or whatever. Same with her. She can be talking to a male cousin. Uh or not a male relative, or a male co-worker, or a male client, whatever. Doesn't mean there's anything sexual going on over there. But this thing, if she goes so far that she insists that you have to be so committed to the extent that she controls who you talk to, I'm telling you, you need to get out of there. Either she changes and you're both going to therapy to fix this or it needs to end because that's a toxic situation. Other way around too. If the guy expects you to be so committed that he ends up controlling when you're talking, where you're talking to, what the heck is that? In this case, the individual insists on being treated as a priority while they treat you as an option. You should never accept things like this. Look. If I, as a tourist, go to Japan, the Japanese people cannot expect me to be as concerned with the country as a native from the country. Hey, why not? Of course not, because I'm a tourist over there. I'm only there you know, to travel around, have a good time, get to know the culture. So they should expect me to obey the laws of the land. So not to drive drunk, uh, not to break, uh, not to cause any trouble on the streets, or whatever. So they can expect me to do the, to do the bare minimum, and they can expect me to show more consideration for the culture, but they cannot expect me to be deeply interested and deeply involved with the issues of the country. They should not.
they still have to treat me as a priority and I need to prioritize them while I'm there. But, the, but I'm not going to be a main priority onto them, so I cannot expect them uh, to have job offers available for me because I'm not uh, a migrant over there. I'm just a, a sojourner, uh, a tourist. And I cannot expect them to invest all their resources into me because, hey, I'm not that relevant over there. I'm just a tourist. Well, what if now I end up marrying a Japanese woman? Move, I, I end up moving to Japan and marrying a Japanese woman over there. In that case, I become a permanent resident, even though I'm not a citizen, because I haven't taken a Japanese nationality, so I don't have a Japanese passport, I'm still a permanent resident, so there's not much difference between me and someone who's an actual Japanese citizen. There are some restrictions, but it's almost similar. Now, because I'm married to a local and I'm a permanent resident over there, they should invest more of the resources into me because I'm there long term and I should prioritize them more. If I'm just, how would I say, as a tourist coming by, I can support, I can still support policies, let's say from Britain or the European Union or America, that may not benefit benefit the Japanese population. Why? Because I'm just a tourist. I have no um, allegiance with Japan. But the moment I'm a permanent resident, I can still be an American citizen or Dutch citizen or Australian citizen, whatever it is. But the fact I'm a permanent resident over there, even if I'm not a citizen with a Japanese passport, I, people can expect me to consider more who I associate with, who I agree with. So I'm obliged to support policies that support Japan. And that doesn't mean I only think about Japan, but I have to, I have to consider Japan more. I have to prioritize Japan, Japan's interests. Why? Because I'm living there and people are investing in me. Simple as that. If I don't want the investment, why did I become a permanent resident? Come on now. So what I'm saying is commitment is different depending on the context of the situation. However, commitment should be the norm in the human species. It should be. It shouldn't only be that it's your sex partner who made a wedding vow onto you, that he or she is the only one who should be committed onto you. Commitment should be the norm in the human species. Whether you are a stranger somewhere, whether you're working somewhere, whether you're a local resident, whether you are, uh, you are one of the local administrators, doesn't matter. Commitment should be the norm. However, Commitment does not mean that you unconditionally surrender to other people. The only one you unconditionally surrender onto is Heavenly Father, God Himself. Everyone else, there is commitment, but it comes conditions with it. The Heavenly Father is committed unto us, even before we were even born. So that's why we ought to be committed unto Him unconditionally, because He's God. Everyone else besides the Heavenly Father, there must be conditions with a commitment. And if people don't reciprocate your commitment in a proper way, and they don't work things out with you in a peaceful way, then you should walk away from them. They're not safe people, simple as that. Where am I heading with this? Listen to me. When people continuously treat you like an option, they're showing their narcissistic attitude. The only thing that matters to those people is their own ease. That's what showing you. They may not tell you that directly because that will um, that will uh, destroy the atmosphere and the social climate. They may not talk down on you or anything demeaning like that. But if someone keeps emphasizing their options, or if someone continuously mentions that they don't owe anyone anything, or or if they keep telling you that others don't owe you anything, if they keep talking to you like you don't have to matter to other people, or if they keep talking to you like you don't matter, or they keep treating you like you're just an option people can dismiss at any time, without regarding how you feel, or how it affects your feelings or your mental well-being, I'm sorry, but why the heck are you still around those people? Now look, if someone acts like a narcissistic bitch, like they should, they, do, they should be the center of the universe. I can honestly tell them, come on, man, start thinking about other people. You're not the only one around. 
that's different. But even then, you should act in a considerate way. You can't just say them F you, the world doesn't revolve around you, who you think you are. That's that's being violent too. No. Even if someone acts like a narcissistic bitch that doesn't uh, allow you or give you the right to uh, act um, like a monster towards them, just because they're like a monster, that's mean you should become a monster too. However, apart, but, but let's say you're not acting like a narcissistic bitch. Let's say you're being considerate, you're doing your part, but people keep treating you like you don't have to matter. Like they keep treating you like your feelings and your mental well being don't matter. Let me tell you, if you keep yourself from people like that, that shows that you don't fail yourself either. And because they pick up and they see clearly that you don't fail yourself, that's why they know they can get away with such behavior. Because let me tell you, someone who actually values themselves properly, they will admit that other people matter too. They will admit that it can't only be focused on themselves. They will realize that only focus on themselves is horrible, is pathetic, and what the heck. It's quite dishonorable to do that. So they, because they value themselves, they want to be a quality human in a, in a balanced way towards other people. So people that value themselves, they want balance and harmony with others. And the moment they realize that they went too far or they misbehaved or that they were insensitive, they realize what heck am I doing? They get convicted and they do something about the behavior for the better. Or if you are a bit imbalanced towards them, they'll call it out in a considerate way. But people that don't value themselves, they're either lash out at you when they feel like you neglect them or are not considered towards them. It doesn't mean that you were guilty of it, but they feel like it. So feelings are facts for them. Because they lack self-worth. Someone that lacks self-worth, someone who doesn't feel themselves properly, they'll either lash out against you or they just ghost you anytime things will go their way, anytime they feel a certain way. Or they may stick around you and enable you mistreating them just because they want to pat on the back. In any case, it's a bad situation. I want you to understand the following. People that continuously treat you like an option, they don't value you they don't value your safety your sanity nor your well-being the only undermine is what they can get out of you whether it's sex whether it's money whether it's approval whether it's silence because some people just want to be able to control you and shut your mouth so they can feel good about themselves so they see you as a topic side their unrest what whatever it is they they want or expect from you that's all things on their minds not you they love being able to have ox towards you but it doesn't mean they love you People that actually love you, they consider how they affect your mental, emotional, and physical well-being. Even if someone is dysfunctional, if someone is dysfunctional and they behave in a toxic or disruptive way, they're just dysfunctional. They're not evil. So such people, when you call things out or when the situation escalates, you're like, oh, what the heck what did I do? I need to be, become better. You can still address them because their people are just as functional. But when someone is neglectful, they simply don't regard you nor anyone at all. That means you also don't regard their own well-being. Why the heck are you still around people like that? Are you kidding me? By the way, even the loss of the land don't allow you to keep treating people like they're just an option. When you're driving on the road, you have to obey the traffic rules. If you don't, you get the ticket or the ticket where you drive slice. You may end up in, in jail or prison if you end up injuring people on the road. Okay, those are strangers. You can't say, I have nothing to do with those people. I don't know them. I don't care about them. I just want to be left alone. No, no, no. The judge will put you in prison. Why? Because those people are a priority. When you're on the road, driving your car or riding a bicycle, whatever it is, others that are all can make use of the road are a priority. You have to consider them. When, some, when you're in public and someone faints, you don't know whether you have a heart attack, whatever it is, you're obliged to call the ambulance if you're able to. Or at least to cry for help because someone just fainted. If, you, if someone faints and just walk away like you didn't see it, later, if the police finds out, you'll be arrested and you even go to prison for that. So even the loss of the land, don't care how you feel and think about other people, they are a priority. So if even this satanic world does not allow you to just continuously treat people like an option, why do we think it's okay for others to keep treating us like an option? Even this satanic world who's against our father doesn't allow it. 
Does this satanic world have more values and more common sense than the Heavenly Father? No. Listen. You are not the center of heaven and earth. You're not God. So you can't expect that just because you arrive somewhere, everyone has to drop everything they're doing and, and, and cater onto you. Okay? That's obvious. However, if people expect you to treat them that way, to drop everything for them just because they're around, just because you're upset, you need to uh, walk on eggshells, okay, now, none, then you should stop. That doesn't add up. There should be harmony and balance in human relationships. Commitment should be the norm amongst all human beings. Simple as that. The level and degree of commitment will vary based on the type of relationship. Because a marriage is a different commitment than you just being a tourist somewhere. Or being a medical doctor is different than being a nurse. So there are degrees and variations in commitment. But commitment should be the norm. So listen to me very well. Listen to me very well. Any time someone keeps emphasizing that they don't have to do something, maybe they're on social media responding to someone else's post or they're the ones making the post talking about, oh, people are so ungrateful these days. We, we, I don't owe to give anyone any tip. I don't owe you to be your expert just doing your job. They keep emphasizing what they don't have to do. Or they keep saying that, well, people don't have to watch your videos. People don't have to like you. People don't have to be kind. They keep emphasizing things they don't have to do. Why are they doing that? Because they want to escape. A healthy human being that's balanced will recognize, listen, my commitment varies from, from person to person. So things I'm obliged here, I'm going to be obliged over there. But I'm not going to make people feel like they don't matter. That that's not right. They would consider how they communicate and what they say. That doesn't mean that they are obliged to make sure everyone's feelings is pampered. For example, on my YouTube channel, I tend to use words that are considered cuss words or, or foul language. Those restrictions, I didn't make them up. I never agreed to them. Those are things the masses hold on to. I'm not obliged to give in to them on my own platform. If I'm at someone else's home visiting them, I may consider the type of style of speech I'm using to regard them. But on my own platform, hell no. Come on now. If people come to my platform and try to dictate how I should speak, in which tell just to please them, think of what the heck. Even if you're donating towards me, that goes a bit too far. If I'm giving quality to you to benefit you, that's what should matter. Okay, you can address my speech if I, for example, am using um spelling errors or if i'm using um a style of speech that may not be effective or may be hindered by ministry of course you should address that but just come around and be upset because i don't speak in a way that's pleasant unto you that goes too far so a healthy and balanced individual will never go out there and act like people just don't matter Anytime people keep emphasizing over and over again that they don't have to do something, they don't have to, I don't have to, I'm not obliged to, I never asked for, and that people keep talking like that, you're dealing with someone who just wants to escape. Such an individual is showing you that they don't want any commitment. They just want to get the benefits and, and, and the ease of the situation. And once it's their time uh, to contribute and to endure and to participate, they leave. You're dealing with someone who has an exploitative mindset. I'm not saying that they're automatically narcissists or evil people, but they have some defective attitude in them. People like that, let me tell you, the time will come that they will blame you for, not, for them not facing themselves. They have unrest because, you, because they don't want to have commitment. They have unrest because they're now in conflict with other people because they just want to escape. They're now... Uh, in unrest because they they develop bitterness towards people not giving in to their ease. That's them. Instead of looking in the mirror, admitting that they need to improve and, and looking for help, they wanna, they're looking for an outlet to feel better. There comes a time that they will blame you for something you never did, something you likely will never do. They'll blame you for things that didn't even happen, just so they can have an outlet. They'll either block you, unfriend you, or they'll just stop communicating with you, ignoring your text messages, ignoring your calls, or they, they'll, um, 
you know, ignore you in public or whatever, they'll begin to act weird and funny towards you. Not funny in an actual funny way, they'll act weird and disgusting towards you out of the blue. And you think, what I do wrong? Don't fall for it. They are the ones who don't want to face themselves. They're the ones who, are, who have antisocial tendencies. They're the ones who are neglectful. They're the ones in violation. But because they don't want to face themselves, they want to act like you're the problem. Some will even argue with you out of the blue. Then you distance yourself from them. And then they reach out to you. And because they, they just reach out to you out of the blue, after going off at you, you don't want to talk to them. And then they tell others, you see, I try to make up with them, but it won't work. It's not on me. They'll now want to manipulate how others see the situation like they're, they're the victim over there. Listen, people will keep emphasizing to you their options over and over again. Watch out with them. Why would you mention something repeatedly over and over again if it doesn't matter to you? For example, if your husband, your husband, is, your husband married you, right? It wouldn't be proper for your husband to keep talking about all his ex-girlfriends all the time. As if they're still available to him. The fact your husband keeps talking about his ex girlfriends over and over again is a red flag because why is he even thinking about these women that often? Those women do matter, but they shouldn't matter to him in such a way. Or let's say your wife keeps talking about uh, all the guys that like her, all the guys that flirt towards her, all, she keeps talking about uh, the success of all these other men. Your wife should be contributing to your success, contributing to your to your prosperity. Why should she, she keep talking about the prosperity of other people? I don't care whether celebrities, politicians, whatever. If she keeps emphasizing the quality and the ambition of those other men, that shows that she's not valuing you. She should be saying, honey, I want you to do more with your life. Look at these other men over here. They're breaking through. You should break, break through too. If that's what she's doing, okay. That's different. But if she keeps talking about those other men, how prosperous, successful this and this they are, why should she focus on them? That means she doesn't value you. That means at some point she plans to leave you if she can get one of those quality men. People don't mention things over and over again if it doesn't matter onto them. For example, let's say sometimes you're late for work, but your employer never mentions it. And you can... Uh, and but your employer does give you compliments and he does encourage you doing your work. That means that you come late a few times, doesn't even matter. If he mentions it, then it matters because he, he took the effort to call it out. Or they actually showed you that they're not, they don't appreciate you coming late that often. But the thing is, people mention what matters to them. You may not know why they mention it over and over again. You may not know why it matters onto them, but people don't mention things over and over again unless it matters. So if people keep mentioning their options and what they don't have to do, that means they want to escape. They want autonomy without responsibility. They want autonomy without responsibility. Watch out with such people because there comes a day. It may not be today. It may not be tomorrow. It may not be it may not be even be in 10 years from now, but the day will come that they will renounce and disown you because they want to be left alone. And that's without you harming them or doing anything wrong on their part. They'll just say, oh, I just outgrew those people. I just don't feel like anymore. Why well, lost interest? Listen, you can lose interest as much or you can lose as much interest as you like. The government will still expect you to pay your taxes. You can lose as much interest if you like. You can outgrow the country you live in. You are still expected to obey the traffic rules. You are still expected uh, to call 911 or to call the ambulance if someone faints over there. Just because you outgrew or you lost interest in someone or something doesn't mean you're now entitled uh, uh, to act without regard to that to those people with that activity. Let's say um, you are, let's say you're on, you're doing martial arts. Okay, you did it for a few years and now you kind of lost interest in it. You cannot act like the martial arts is totally irrelevant, like it don't matter. It does matter. If you begin to act this in dishonor towards the, the, the martial arts and the practitioners, you'll get in trouble. So let's say you lose interest in your marriage. You're still married. Either you get a divorce and you close it off in a proper way and you give an account, or you or you work on yourself. But you're not going to act like, oh yeah, hey, I, I could just cheat or whatever, just because you lost interest. I'm telling you. People that keep emphasizing their options and things they don't have to do, 
if they spend a lot of time on talking and expressing their annoyance and people uh, feel entitled to their time and their effort, listen, the community is entitled to your time and effort. Not in every, not in every way they want, but they are. Okay, if they keep get showing annoyance with people feeling tired to their time and effort, I'm not talking about narcissistic people just want to exploit you. Narcissistic people want to exploit you. Of course, you would be upset with them, would demand that much from you. But people in general should be entitled to some of your time and effort because you're part of the community. Because they have to consider you too, right? Now, if they don't consider you, but they keep feeling tired to you, okay, now that's different. But if people in general just complain about others, uh, demanding things from them, if they even complain about having obligations towards other people, always emphasize their options and things you don't have to do, I'm telling you, people like that, watch out. Limit involvement with them. Do not expose yourself to them that much anymore and stop allowing them to have access towards you. Such people are expressing their desire to escape. Just like Jesus said, what the heart is full of, the mouth speaketh of. So that means that if they keep speaking about wanting to be left alone, or I don't owe people this, or uh, nobody's entitled to my time, uh, nobody's this and that, they always emphasize that they don't owe anyone anything, they always emphasize things they don't have to do, or they always emphasize the options they have. Listen, don't argue with them, don't fight them, just quietly quietly remove yourself from them, limit involvement, and if necessary, go no contact with them. Nobody has the right to continuously treat you like an option. They don't. Now, you're not the main priority that the father should be. You may not be one of the highest priorities for them, but you are a priority. Don't tell me the satanic governments in the world have more sense than believers. Stop allowing people to continue to treat you like an option. Stop doing that. It's not Christ-like. The world may, may approve of such behavior, saying that's polite, that's considerate, uh, exp doing good things, expect anything in return. No, no, no. You do good things because that's what you should do for the community. And the community also should do good things for you. It goes both ways. But you can't tell them just be good, be of good quality, we don't expect nothing in return. What the heck is that? It shouldn't go that way. Stop allowing people to get away continuously treating you like an option. If you let them get away continuously treating you like an option, that shows that you don't value yourself. And that means at some point, you're not a victim anymore, but you're a collaborator of your own demise. Are you also collaborating and contributing to the demise of others? Stop doing that. Well, that's it for now. Keep on improving Christ, be at peace. And remember, you're not more loving than having father. So stop being a willing doormat to make people at ease who are not even serving God. Because people who do serve God will never treat you like a doormat. They don't want that. Anyway, shalom.